Elliott wave theory is the subject of this week's power charting episode. We have special guest Jeffrey Kennedy with us today to talk about the introduction to the wave principle. I've known Jeffrey for a long time and he has been a lecturer and a teacher at Golden Gate University. And we have done a lot of work on Elliott Wave. This is one of Hank, Dr. Hank Pruden's favorite subjects. And uh, Jeff has been a great uh, contributor to the education at Golden Gate University. Jeff, thanks for being here. My pleasure, Bruce. So we uh, uh, are looking forward to your discussion today. Jeff is going to talk about the introduction to the wave principle. And so we're gonna turn the screen over to him. So hang on just a second. Jeff is one of the premier educators of the wave method. And he's also a great trader using the Elliott Wave methodology. Today, he's going to introduce us to some concepts that are very important to the foundation of Elliott Wave. Jeff, take it away. Well, thank you, Bruce, and hello, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Jeffrey Kennedy. Uh, I'm the Chief Commodity Analyst at Elliott Wave International and also the editor of Traders Classroom. Both services are designed, say, toward education, but they're all focused on uh, primarily the wave principle. So let's go ahead and get started. And I always love doing these discussions on the wave principle because whenever I speak publicly or privately about the wave principle, there seems to be a bit of confusion. A lot of individuals who say have an encounter or have an experience with the Elliott wave principle, I, they seem to be more confused uh, more so than anything else. So what I like to do as an instructor, teacher, educator is to simplify things. Uh, so simply put, the wave principle is nothing more than a form of technical analysis based on pattern recognition and crowd psychology. And it was developed by a gentleman by the name of Ralph Nelson Elliott in the 1930s. Now the core, the basic foundation of the wave principle is right in front of you. These are the five core patterns. This is sometimes what, if you're a lecturer or a presenter, sometimes what we refer to as the money shot. This slide right in front of you is the key because this slide here shows the five core Elliott wave patterns. Everything we know about the wave principle originates from these five core patterns. So if you want a simplistic understanding of the wave principle, this slide right here is the best place to begin. Now remember, the wave principle, what it does is it gives us, say, uh, context for market analysis. And the way it actually does that is it does so by classifying price action into two specific modalities, one which we call motive waves and one which we call corrective waves. Now there are two types of motive wave patterns, the impulse wave that you see here in the upper left hand corner and the diagonal. And then as far as corrective wave patterns, you have three, the zigzag, the flat and the triangle. Again, everything that we know about the wave principle originates from these five core patterns. Now, for some of you who might be familiar, already familiar with the wave principle, you may think, okay, well, what about an expanded flat or a running flat? Yes, those are patterns, Elliott wave patterns, but they're a variation. They're a derivative of, for example, this core structure that we refer to as a flat pattern. So these are the five core patterns. This is where we start. Now, I just wanted to kind of give you an idea a little bit about some of the basic formation and structure. Like, for example, this is your classical impulse wave. Again, one of the two types of motive wave patterns. 
we have ways one, two, three, four, and five. The significance of this formation, this specific pattern, is that it indicates or denotes the direction of the larger trend. Now, an example of an impulse wave in a real market, in a real stock, on an open, high, low, close price chart is represented here in this price chart in Anthem, ticker symbol ANTM. And I'm beginning the wave count from the September 2017 low. What we have here are waves one, two, three. Here's our tr small triangle fourth wave. And this, are, this is our fifth wave advance. So I remember the reason I like to offer or provide examples of these wave patterns on a, on a real chart, on a real open, high, low, close price chart is because I remember when I was first learning the wave pattern or the wave principle, I would start off with these line diagrams and I had no problem distinguishing these, these patterns, these Elliott wave formations or structures whenever I would look at a line diagram. But whenever I started looking at actual open, high, low, close price charts, that's when I began to get a little bit confused. My vision would blur a little bit. So I always like to provide a real, say, a real example of this is what an ending diagonal looks like in, say, XYZ market. Now this is an ending diagonal. This is one of the second type of mode of wave formation. It is a terminating wave pattern and it's limited to where it may actually form. It can only occur in the fifth wave position of an impulse wave as you see here or as wave C of either a zigzag or a flat. Now, what is significant about the ending diagonal is that it tends to lead to a very sharp reversal in price upon its completion. Here is an example of an ending diagonal in the iShares Russell uh, 2000 index. This is an ETF, ticker symbol IWM. And notice again the overlapping waves that we see here. That overlap between waves four and one, for example, is characteristic of this formation, of this pattern. And then following that, we see the first type of corrective structure that we'll review, and that is a zigzag. A zigzag is the first type of corrective formation that there is. It's referred to as a 5-3-5 pattern. Elliotitians many times will use little, little notations. And one of the notations we use is a 5-3-5 pattern or a 3-3-5 pattern. This is just like, again, a notation or a code that we're looking at in this instance here, a zigzag. We have waves one, two, three, four, five for A, A, B, C for B, and then waves one, two, three, four, and five. So we have five, three, and five. That's why we refer to the zigzag as a five, three, five pattern. Now, an example of a zigzag uh, was evident in take two in, say, early uh, 2018. Off the high here, uh, ticker symbol for take two is TTWO. And notice we have an impulsive decline, a three-wave advance, followed by another impulsive decline. Quite clear. And then we move on to the flat. Now, the notation that we use for a flat is 3, 3, 5, and that simply refers to the structure. The first move, wave A, will be identified as a three-wave move, waves A, B, and C. Wave B will also be a three-wave form, waves A, B, and C, and then, of course, that will be followed by a five-wave decline. One of the distinguishing characteristics of the regular flat is that wave B ends at or near the origin point of wave A. Now, an example of a flat is evident in American Tower. Uh, this occurred in 2016, where we have a three-wave decline for wave A, a three-wave move up in wave B. Specifically, that B is actually an expanded flat because your wave B of that structure actually terminated beyond the origin point of wave A. Then we have our wave B peak followed by the five-wave decline. Now, again, what's significant about uh, these structures, these patterns, is that a correction, remember there are three types of corrections. You have zigzags, flats, and triangles. These corrections, these are counter trend price moves. Now for me as a trader, this is very, very important because my trading style is very simple. I like to find a trending market, 
say an uptrending market and in an uptrending market, my trading style, again, is quite simple. I like to buy pullbacks. I like to buy pullbacks in uptrending markets and I like to sell bounces in downtrending markets. So as an Elliottician, whenever I look in a market, I'm always looking for the direction of those motive waves, the direction of those five wave moves, because again, the importance or significance of that specific pattern is it tells me the direction of the larger trend. And then once I know the direction of the larger trend confidently, then all I do is simply sit back, watch and wait for the culmination or the completion of a corrective structure as such as this. And then that allows me to enter the market to the buy side in this case, and be confident that we will indeed see prices exceed the extremes that occurred during the formation of the, of, for example, in this case here, a flat pattern. So this is Jeff, a just to I'm sorry? ask a clarifying question. Yes. So on a flat, like a three, three, five, when you get that fifth, that five wave pattern, that really indicates to you that that's the concluding uh, wave of the correction. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Now there is a variation to these corrective structures and they fall into a category that I call variations or complexities. Uh, again, we have five core structures that we work with, impulse, diagonal, zigzag, flat, and triangle. But in some instances, Bruce, whenever a, say, a price move uh, travels too far, too fast, you need more than just one corrective structure to correct that formation. So sometimes you'll form what we call a WXY or a complex correction. And I know that sounds confusing, but all you have to do is simply think of it in bits and pieces. All a complex correction is, a WXY, it's two corrective structures joined together by an X wave. But upon the completion of a counter trend move, for example, in the case of American Tower, once you have five waves down and done, that finishes this formation. And if we apply the guideline of what Elliot referred to as the right look, or what I sometimes refer to as the guideline of proportionality, there's nice structure, nice proportion between this initial impulsive advance and the subsequent corrective decline. So at this point, back in November and December and into January, yes, I would be more than confident that the subsequent uptrend or the subsequent move up in American Tower would indeed yield new price highs. Now, at the end of the show, we're going to uh, show you how you can learn more from Jeffrey uh, through his uh, videos and other methods for developing even further mastery with the uh, wave method. So, yeah, yes, we will. <laughs> yeah. Well, moving on. Um, so what we have here is the third type of corrective structure. This is simply the triangle. Uh, it's easy to identify. It's a sideways price move. As you can see here, here's a great example of a contracting triangle in Zillow. Now, each pattern, each pattern that we've talked about so far, impulse, uh, impulse wave, uh, ending diagonal, zigzag, flattened triangle, each one of these patterns, they do indeed have their own set of rules and guidelines which govern the development of that specific pattern. For example, one of the rules and guidelines of a fourth wave, or excuse me, of a triangle, is that a triangle can only form by itself in the four B or X wave positions. But the significance of a triangle is that it always introduces the final move of a sequence. So once you see a triangle form, you know you've got one more move up coming and then pretty much the party's over. Now that's very useful to me as a trader because once we see this thrust out of the triangle begin to develop, then at this point I tend to be a little bit more aggressive in protecting say open profits or moving protective stops up and managing risk as effective as possible. Uh, another component that if you're familiar with the wave principle uh, with is Fibonacci, specifically Fibonacci analysis. And the primary reason why is because R.N. Elliott uh, believed that the Fibonacci sequence was the mathematical basis of the wave principle. So we as Elliotticians were always on our calculator or utilizing our Fibonacci retracement tools, multiple tools or dividers in an attempt to identify the extent of waves. 
waves. For example, the most common Fibonacci retracement for a second wave is a 618 retracement of wave one. The most common Fibonacci retracement for a fourth wave is a 382 multiple of wave three. Uh, typically within an impulse wave, wave three will be the longest wave. Um, that's one thing that we see quite frequently, especially in the stock market. When it comes to say commodities, which is another thing that I do at LA Wave International, it's the fifth wave, which tends to be uh, the wave that tends to extend more often than not. So again, we use Fibonacci mathematics extensively in our work to get an idea of how far a wave will actually travel. Now within corrective structures, if it's a zigzag or a flat, we tend to see equalities, but equality between waves C and A quite frequently. And of course, going to the triangle, because it's a sideways affair, we tend to see alternating waves within a triangle adhere to 618 multiples. Now, a lot of this, again, is I know it's we're kind of going over somewhat of a very complex target, I mean, complex subject quite quickly. But if you go back to that initial slide that I showed you where we have the five core patterns, if you can master those structures, those five patterns, everything else will indeed fall into place. Now, uh, before I start signing off, Bruce, how much time do I have left? Because I have uh, something special I would like to uh, share with the viewers. Oh my gosh. Well, for special things, we'll just like add time. <laughs> you, you have a, we have about 12 minutes. Okay, well, good. Awesome, awesome. I think I can cover my special topic in that amount of time. Oh, I'm excited. I can't wait. Okay, well, good. Um, before we wrap things up with Fibonacci analysis, I would like to just remind everyone one of the best ways to make Fibonacci analysis or mathematics more impactful is to do, is simply do not rely on a single objective. For example, uh, I've already mentioned that, say, for example, the uh, the depth of a second wave tends to be a 618 multiple of wave one. A lot of elementitians make this mistake of simply stopping at that one calculation. But there are more calculations we can do. For example, what we have here as far as our second wave is an expanded flat. So we now can begin doing calculations between wave C and wave A. In this instance here, I would be looking for, say, for example, wave C to equal a 1.618 multiple of wave A. We've already identified the 618 retracement of wave 2 versus wave 1. And then we can even break things down even further and begin looking at, say, uh, looking for a target of where wave 5 equals the length traveled in wave 1 within the wave C sell-off. So what we can actually do to really zero in on the termination of a wave, in this example, it's going to be the culmination of wave 2, we can actually perform three separate calculations. So again, if you're going to do Fibonacci mathematics and you're looking to identify either a support level or a resistance level or a trade target, I strongly encourage the viewers to do more than just one calculation and identify a cluster, a cluster of support and or a cluster of resistance. Now, since I have the time, one of the things I like to do is always give a little bit of a bonus or a perk. And I want to share with the viewers what my favorite Elliott Wave based trade setup actually is. And that's the fourth wave pullback. Now I go into trading with the wave principle a little bit more in depth in my book written by Wayne Gorman and myself, and it's called The Visual Guide to Elliott Wave Trading. Now, if you're interested in the wave principle, not just from an educational standpoint of view, but from an application point of view, say to trade with, I strongly encourage you to take a look at the book because what I do is I actually provide guidelines on how to trade each of the specific five core Elliott wave patterns. Now within, say, the context of Elliott wave structure, we're going to look at initially a five wave move. Now this was one of the very first slides we looked at. This was in the, under the motive wave section, and this is specifically an impulse wave. This was a Navistar International, and we have a wave one advance, a wave two pullback. Notice how closely this wave two pullback came to the 618 retracement of wave one just as we discussed under our analysis of Fibonacci. Then we see our wave three price move, 
Wave three went to just a little bit beyond the 2.0 multiple between wave three and wave one. Very acceptable proportion between waves three and one within an impulse wave. Then we see our counter trend move, our fourth wave move. Again, right back to a 382 retracement of wave three, one of the things that we just got through speaking about. So what this actually does, utilizing this Elliott wave template, this gives me great confidence about playing the buy side in Navistar International because we're working an impulsive structure. This is clearly a counter trend move. This is clearly a fourth wave pullback. And we can even dive deeper into the price chart and see that we have an A expanded flat B followed by an ending diagonal in the wave C position. Another takeaway that I think the viewers might appreciate is that counter trend price action tends to be contained within parallel lines. That's kind of a trick right there. Very, very important. Well, we talked about Navistar in Traders Classroom, one of the services that I author or edit at Elliott Wave International, and we actually walked through this idea on the 24th of April back in 2017. And we were quite bullish at that time in Navistar, bottom line, because of the underlying Elliott Wave structure. This was quite clear in Navistar. So the, uh, the confidence was quite high on further rally, easily back to beyond the objective that we saw here. And as you can see, that's exactly what transpired in the weeks and months that actually followed. So simply put, my favorite Elliott Wave trade setup is the fourth wave pullback uh, it, within an up, uptrending market, simply because um, I find that the fourth wave pullback has the highest probability of success within an impulsive structure. Right. And I think that about does it for me, Bruce. Do you have well, any questions? I do. And my uh, experience with you, Jeff, is that you are one of the really practical users of Elliott Wave and that your orientation towards it is how do you find the best trading setups as you just described right here with this fourth wave correction and that uh, your whole orientation is how can I find the best low risk ideas? And Absolutely. So, and so uh, I see that you like to focus and you've always said that you like to focus on these fourth wave corrections uh, also, but do you also look at second wave corrections or, uh, as a uh, possible uh, trading setup? Well, in my book, uh, The Visual Guide to Elite Wave Trading, I go through, I describe what I refer to as what, or what Elioticians refer to as an eight wave cycle. That's simply a five wave move up followed by a three wave decline. That's where you come up with your eight waves. Mm -hmm. Now within that eight wave cycle, there are four primary opportunities. Buying the wave two pullback, buying the four, wave four pullback, selling five waves up and done, and then your counter trend move in wave B that would be wave seven, uh, selling that in anticipation of wave C. So within an eight wave cycle, you have four primary opportunities. Now of those four opportunities, most individuals tend to focus on buying the wave two pullback because they're thinking that they can make, you know, have the greatest, say, capital gain as wave three develops because wave three tends to be the longest impulse wave of waves one, three, and five. Um, they also focus on the fourth wave pullback in anticipation of wave five. They always like to pick tops. New traders tend to like to pick tops and bottoms. So whenever you have five waves up and done, the guideline is, is that prices will correct and push prices back into the span of travel of the prior fourth wave. And then of course you have your wave B counter trend move. Now of those four setups, the one setup I like the least is the fifth wave top. I'm not a fan of picking tops and bottoms. That is a trading style. I, I, I know everybody at some point, I've done it, you've done it, I'm sure a, a lot of the viewers have done it, but it's a very, it's a very difficult uh, style of trading to do consistently, week in, week out, month in, month out. So I'm uh, somewhat averse 
to actually tra trying to trade a market in anticipation of picking a top or bottom. I'm very much of a trend trader. Now going back to your wave two and your wave four, why do I like wave four better than wave two? Even though that there's more capital appreciation of the potentiality or the possibility of capital appreciation for the onset of wave three is because there's a uh, event or a, a variation or complexity to motive wave development. And that is something we call a truncation or a failed wave, a wave that should make a new extreme that is actually unable to do so. That event is exceedingly rare. So whenever it comes to our eight wave cycle, even though there's more money to be made in say positioning yourself for wave three, the probability of success, in my opinion, is much greater by focusing on that fifth and final wave move, again, because the odds of a truncation actually occurring is exceedingly low, like less than 10%, and I would even venture to say less than 5%. And as a trader, I tend to focus more on, say, the probability of a trade being successful versus the amount of money I can actually make on a trade. So for me, it's always a numbers game. And I'm much more, much more comfortable focusing on a trade that gives me a high degree of success, even if the, even if the end result is, say, a very nominal, uh, say, profit versus a trade setup where, hey, I can 10 times my money, but the odds of really doing that might be 20%. So, and therein lies the reason why we uh, really enjoy Jeff's teaching is the, your practicality towards finding the high probability trade and using Elliott Wave to identify that. And uh, I think that's, uh, brilliant, especially considering that uh, you have the, the greatest momentum characteristics in a stock or uh, in a commodity as you are completing a fourth wave, because by then you have so much interest in the vehicle that you're trading. Uh, there's so many, uh, so much interest in it that momentum can uh, uh, really take off uh, at that point. And uh, I really like that aspect of your approach. Thank you. So um, in the minute or so that we have left, Jeff, what is it that uh, ultimately attracted you to Elliott Wave and uh, something that you have such mastery in now and are so good at? What is it that attracted you to it in the first place? Um, the way my mind works, Bruce, and that's an excellent, excellent question, is I'm a very visual person. Um, I can see patterns quite easily. For me, it's, it's uh, I'm very much of a, say, into aesthetics, how things look. I'm very, very visual. Uh, in fact, you bring up a, 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 a great point. A friend of mine once showed me his trading methodology, uh, and he was a successful trader, a consistently successful trader, but I noticed his approach was at the end of the day, he would pull out these Excel spreadsheets and he would spend about 30 or 40 minutes inputting numbers. And then uh, you know, when it was all said and done, he hit return or enter on the keyboard and, and that would tell him what to do the following day. And his methodology, it, it suited him. He was a numbers guy. One of the things I tell my students and my subscribers is that it's very important for you, the viewer, to ultimately find what works best for them. Uh, a, a mistake waiting to happen is if somebody who's very visual tries to make, say, a numbers-based, say, maybe a quantitative style of analysis, their, their go-to approach to the market. You have to find what works best for you. So for me, the visual uh, aspect of technical analysis, and specifically the wave principle, is what speaks to me uh, the greatest versus, say, a quantitative approach or, say, a fundamental approach. Well, Jeff Kennedy, thank you so much for being here. I hope that you'll come back and uh, show us some more uh, practical application of the LA wave principle. Well, thank you, Bruce, and I most certainly will.